Hey everyone, it's Charlene. Today we're going to be talking about stamping foam. It is a product from Simon Hurley and I'm going to show you five different fun ways that you can use this really amazing product. So let's get started. Now, when you first break out your stamping foam, you're going to wanna use some washi tape or painter's tape, purple tape, whatever you have, and you're gonna to want to put your foam on an acrylic block. This makes the process so much easier. So this stamping foam is from Simon Hurley. It is a newer product. I've actually had it for a little while when it first came out, um, then it was out of stock everywhere. But so the first way you can use this is with dyes. And you guys are not gonna believe how cool this stamping foam is. I don't know why I waited to break it out, but it kind of sat there for a little while because I wasn't really sure what to do with it. And finally I decided, you know what, I'm gonna break it out and I'm just gonna make a bunch of fun backgrounds. So you heat it up with your heat tool. Um, you can also use a heat gun. You just need to be a little more careful with that. And then you press it into the die and you get this really cool image that you can stamp with. So I'm coming in here with some Hero Arts ink in Key Lime Pie and Blue Hawaii. I find that it works really well with the stamping foam to rub your stamp on. Don't tamp it down, but to rub it on. I think that gives you the most even coverage. So I'm using some Key Lime Pie in the center there, and then I'm coming around with the Blue Hawaii. You could leave it at that and just go ahead and stamp. There are so many different ways to do this. This is why I kind of wanted to show you guys a bunch of different ways, and I only scratched the surface. If you want to watch stamping foam videos till the day's end, you can go check out Simon Hurley's videos. He has a ton of them on stamping foam. So if you get any ink um, kind of like cross-contaminated from one of your ink pads to another, you can just rub off the top of your ink pad. That's it. That's all there is to it. So you can see I came in there with a blending brush to just kind of smooth some things. And then all you do is you mist it with some water. That's going to give you kind of a more vibrant outcome. Now watch this. This is so cool. You don't need to use a pressure tool. I was kind of playing around, wasn't sure what to do. But look at that. Oh my gosh, it is so cool. I love how vibrant and interesting it is. It like reminds me of an art print or something that you would put on your wall. Um, I could see using something like this to sort of mass produce cards as gifts or something like that. And it's really easy to clean off. You just spray it with water like you saw me do and then wipe it off with the cloth. So now I wanna show you what it looks like with Distress Oxide. And I was kind of playing around here to see what it would look like with a blending brush. And then later you're gonna see what it looks like when you use it direct from the ink pad. It gives you a completely different look. So play around, see what you're going for. I'm coming in here with some Kitsch Flamingo and then I'm going to blend that with some salvaged patina. And this time, instead of doing a light misting of water, I'm gonna do more of a spritz because I wanna get that cool distress oxide look you get when you spritz water on it. So play, people, play. This is so fun. I felt kind of like a kid doing arts and crafts. It, it gave me that feeling of, ooh, what can I do next? I feel that way too when I do alcohol inks. I just am so excited to see what shows up. And the beautiful thing about this is if you don't like the stamped image that came out, you can just heat up the foam and stamp something else. There isn't the risk of buying a stamp set or something like that that you're not sure if you're gonna like and then you get it in the mail and you're like, oh, this is bigger or smaller than I thought it was gonna be, none of that. So now I'm gonna spray it off camera and I'm just using my Tim Holtz Dispress Sprayer for this. You could also use a mini mister and that actually might work better. Um, I did use one a little bit later and you'll see what I did. But so you just press it down. I'm not really sure how long you should press it down for. I kind of did short lengths, long lengths in between. Uh, I tried lots of different stuff, so play with it. But isn't that cool? You can see the little water droplets and when it dries, it looks even more amazing. 
So the second way you can use this is with background stamps. You can see I'm there with my heat it tool and you're just gonna heat it until the image is gone from your stamping foam, that's it. Now you do need to work a little quick when you are putting the foam onto whatever you're trying to get an imprint of. So don't heat it up and then wait and then try and stamp it. It's gotta be hot in order for it to sort of mold around whatever it is you're trying to take an imprint of. Here I'm using a recent thing that I purchased, which is my favorite things. It's a snowfall background. And I thought, how cool would it be to use the stamping foam? And then I would get the sky all one color, but the little snow dots would stay white. So here I'm using speckled egg and I am rubbing it back and forth, making sure to get a really good coating on the top of this you get so much more coverage when you go direct from the ink pad and then I'm going to just stamp it directly onto the paper. I'm not even going to mist it because I know I have it good and wet. The reason you spritz kind of with water is to make sure you get more of the ink off of the foam onto the paper. So you can use your judgment and decide whether or not it makes sense to spritz your stamping foam. How cool is that? I love this background. And in fact, the finished card that I'm gonna show you guys at the end, I use this background because I just thought it was so cool. The third way you can use this stamping foam is with plants and flowers and outdoor kind of things from nature. I just went and picked up some leaves off the ground and a couple off of my tree and I brought them in, arranged them how I thought they might look nice and I stamped with the stamping foam. How cool is that? You can see on there um, a little bit of what looks like the remnant of the snowfall background, but it does not show up in any of the stamping or anything like that. I don't know why it did that because it didn't do it on other backgrounds that I did, but just keep that in mind. As long as those areas are smooth, it's not gonna imprint. So here I'm coming in with some prize ribbon and then I'm using Villainous Potion, two of my favorite new colors from Tim Holtz. And these are again in the oxide. This I'm gonna show you two different ways. I wanted to go direct from pad and then I wanted to try it again with the blending brushes but using as much ink as I could on the blending brush just to see sort of what the differences were between the two. When you're using these large distress oxide pads, it is a little hard to get into the little nooks and crannies direct from the pad. So keep that in mind, you might want to, if you have a lot of different elements in your design that you've put on your foam, you might wanna use the small ink cubes. They are definitely easier to get onto the stamping foam. So then what I did is I came in with a blending brush because I could tell that it was going to be kind of blotchy when I stamped down just from the amount of lines that were in the design. So I came in with a blending brush and just tried to smooth it out a little bit. But when I stamp, you're gonna see those lines still, they, they look really cool though. It just depends on what you're going for. If you want more of kind of an abstract, artsy kind of look, or if you want more of a smooth kind of overall look, it just, depends on what you want. So I'm using a mini mister and this is a mini mister that actually has the perfect pearls powder in it. I keep one around and I thought it might be fun to see how that would impact the stamping. I didn't really see a lot of sparkle. So I would say just use water, but you can experiment. Maybe if I used bigger splashes, it would show up, but I didn't see any of the pearlescent. But look at that, how cool is that? You can see all of the details, all of the veining of the different leaves. I love it. It reminds me of when I was a kid and we would do leaf rubbings in school. I don't know if you guys ever did those, but you get like a piece of paper and you put the dry leaves underneath and then you'd run over the top of them with a crayon. Um, that's what it reminds me of, but way cooler. So coming in again with that villainous potion and then the prize ribbon, and I'm really putting it on thick with the blending brush. I'm pushing hard on the ink pad to kind of get as much ink as I can onto my blending brush. And this creates a completely different look from the same exact stamp you're gonna see. It's, I don't know which one I like better. I think they're both cool for different reasons. So going in, getting real good coverage, kind of going in back with the Villainous Potion just to sort of smooth it out a little bit, but that's it. 
these are so quick and easy. You could make, I don't know, like 50 of these with no problem. So spritzing it, bringing it in, pushing it down. You don't have to hold it down for too long. I hold it down for about five seconds, I think. Um, but look how cool this one is. It's got kind of more of an all over subdued, pretty background look to it. So whichever way you wanna try it, they're both fun. And all you're using is paper and ink. It's amazing, and this one tool. So the next way, the fourth way you can use the stamping foam is with household items. I just walked out into my living room and grabbed the first thing I thought would make a cool impression. And it was this lantern that I have on my end table next to my couch. And it is so cool. Coming in with Distress Ink, I'm here I'm using Chip Sapphire, Lucky Clover, and Shabby Shutters. This is a really cool ink color combination. Um, in fact, if you use this during the holidays, it kind of gives you this cool vibe. I don't know. I went over direct from the ink pad and then I came in with my foam domed daubers in order to sort of smooth out the ink a little bit. And I'm gonna show you two different versions of this one as well, because you can see, if you look at that stamping foam, you can see there's color down in the lines. That does somewhat show up. I pushed a little too hard using those foam daubers and it does show up when I come in and put it down on the paper. And it just depends on what you're going for. Again, I still have all of the definition of the lines, but you can see some of that color in those white areas. So cool, love this, really gorgeous. So here's the second version. I went a little lighter this time so that it wouldn't transfer as much. Completely different look, same exact thing, same exact colors, just the pressure that I used was different. So for this one, I am coming in, this is the fifth way you can use this, and I actually went back and stamped with the stamping foam the snowfall again. So you're gonna come in, and this is a masking technique. I'm using Gina K masking paper, but if you have mint tape or anything else, it, whatever you've got that you use to do your masking, this will work. So I'm taking some snowflake dies that I have coordinating stamps for and I'm cutting out three of the snowflakes, one large and two small. And then I'm going to arrange this, the masking paper directly onto the stamping foam. So that way when I stamp the stamping foam down on my paper, the areas where the masking magic is are not going to transfer. Here I'm using two colors from Concord and Ninth. I am using sea glass and grapefruit. So I'm gonna use grapefruit for the stamping, you'll see in a minute. And here I'm just really covering that snow background with the sea glass. And now I have found that with the foam kind of um, ink pads, the ones that have a foam pad, they don't work as well. These are foam, so I really had to work at getting the color to transfer onto the stamping foam. It still worked, but it was a little more difficult. So I'm just placing my snowflakes and here's a hot tip. If you are ever trying to make something look like it's a piece of patterned paper, make sure whatever your pattern pieces are that they in some areas go off of your quote unquote paper. So that makes it look more natural versus if everything's sort of lined up and inside the frame of your paper. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head, but <laughs> so go ahead and you get that all down and then just lightly mist with the water and press it down. I think this is one of my favorite backgrounds. And earlier I told you I was gonna use the other snowfall background. It's actually this one that I used in my finished card. I knew it was a snowfall background. Um, so coming in, you're gonna give it some good pressure, especially with that sea glass, it's a lighter color. So now you can see the areas where the masking magic was is white. So I can fit my snowflake stamps that coordinate with the dies into the areas where the masking magic was and stamp. It gives a really cool effect. I love this so much. And you can use this masking magic with any kind of stamp that you have. I just wanted to show you in conjunction with the stamping foam that it works as well. It's a really cool technique because this little block of foam allows you to get a lot more out of your products. And it's really inexpensive. I was actually 
very surprised by how inexpensive it is. So check it out. You can find it at lots of different retailers. I will link to um, where I purchased it from over at my blog at dreamcraftcreate.com. So you can check it out over there. And you can also see some more close-up pictures of what I did here. Now that I finished the first two stamps, I'm gonna come in with the third stamp down there in the bottom right. And I am gonna trim my panel down somewhat once I'm done because I wanna have about a quarter of an inch white border around the stamp. So it is gonna cut off some more of the large snowflake. And you're gonna see it looks really nice. Coming in with these light colors, um, I find that I always have to double stamp. So it's really helpful to have some kind of stamping platform, whether you use a Misty or you use one like I have, which is We Are Memory Keepers. Whatever you have works. I actually really like this stamping platform, um, so I don't feel like I need to get a Misty, even though it seems like everybody has a Misty. Okay, here is the finished backgrounds and card. Look at that card, isn't it adorable? I just popped up that center piece. I used some coordinating sea glass cardstock and I put a die cut and some sequins. Easy peasy, quick, clean and simple card. All right guys, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, get those notifications and I'll see you next time. Bye.